retro bass and kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassing. Oh. Well, welcome to Retro Bassing. Here we are in the Texas bunker hanging out, uh, like I'm sure the rest of my bassin' buds are out there. It's been a wild, uh, been a wild couple weeks for sure. So I, um, was going to get on the water today, but it has been a hot minute since I've uploaded a video and I wanted to catch up with everybody um, to see how everyone's doing um, and let you know what is in the hopper for Retro Bassin, aside from, well, this kind of stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I'm thirsting for simpler times. So what has been going on in the world of Retro Bassin? Well, a few things. Um, first and foremost, I think you heard we do have a new Retro Bassin theme song, uh, courtesy of my good buddy, Mr. Tom Lamb. So, Tom, thank you for that. Um, when, when the quarantine ends, we're going to get Tom and Brandon in the studio, and we're going to do a live rendition of the new Retro Bassin theme song. Tom actually sent that one cold. I was not expecting it, but it blew my mind, and I can't wait to incorporate that in hopefully many episodes to come. So what I would like to do today... Uh, in lieu of going fish, and by the way, I've got some plans to get on the water, hopefully this week. Obviously, I've got a little bit of downtime with all of the craziness going on in the world right now. Um, but I did want to take a little time to reconnect with everybody, and also read some viewer questions, which have been piling up over the past couple of months. So we'll start right now. Okay, so the first question comes from Terry Gordy in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So uh, Terry asks, Retro. How did you start a career in the fishing industry and the fame and wealth that comes with 597 U2 subscribers? Um, actually, thank you for the question, Terry. Um, but to set the record straight, I actually lost two overnight. Uh, hopefully they didn't succumb to the virus, but now I'm down to 595. So hopefully we'll get a few back after this. But how did I get started? Well, I was always a fisherman growing up. I grew up in Maryland on the Severn River did a ton of brackish water, saltwater fishing, and also hit a ton of farm ponds for largemouth bass when I was doing it. I was a journalism major in college, and at that time, I was the freshwater fishing editor for a little magazine called The Fisherman Magazine, based in Lewis, Delaware. My time at The Fisherman was really my first foray into fishing media, and I immediately fell in love with the format. I loved everything about fishing, of course, but as a writer, as a journalist, I got to go out and experience it and also learn from the best in the world, which was pretty cool. Shortly after I graduated college, I took a job as the managing editor for this. This is called the Big Game Fishing Journal, which is based in Point Pleasant, New Jersey at the time. Picked up and moved into a little, um, I think it was 400 square feet uh, apartment right off the beach in Belmar, New Jersey. And I did this. This was a bi-monthly magazine. Came out once every uh, two months. This was a offshore fishing magazine. It was not my initial passion when it came to fishing, but I got to learn a ton more about the industry uh, and also fish with some of the greatest in the world. Um, a new Tread Barta, uh, Black Bart Miller, uh, Jose Wahebe, so many uh, of the greats of the saltwater world um, I got to work with on a daily basis, which was pretty cool. So I spent about six years at the Big Game Fishing Journal until I got out of the industry altogether which is why I was super stoked to start the YouTube channel and get right back in. All right, next we have a question from Mr. Jimmy Garvin in Tampa, Florida. So Jimmy asked, Retro, what is your favorite all-time vintage lure? This one for me is really just about nostalgia and nothing else. But there was no single lure that got me more pumped as a kid than this silly thing. This is called a Power Pack Minnow. If you've seen this before, it looks like a Moto Minnow that Chuck Woolery used to sell. This was the original one. I think it originally developed actually in uh, Texas. The way it works is you pull the string, the tail paddles, 
and it vibrates on the water. The string actually pulls if you cast the rod and then if you jerk it like a popper, that string does it. It is 100% a total gimmick lure, but I've actually caught a ton of bass on this. And just for pure nostalgia's sake, uh, this lure, it just reminds me of my youth. I remember riding my bike to the tackle box with my buddy Jay. We would pick up some of these and hit the farm ponds and believe it or not, it worked. This will be coming up in a future episode for sure. All right, next question. Mr. Michael Hayes from Pensacola, Florida. Michael asks, Retro, how soon until Retro Bassin sells out and every episode turns into an extended product demo? Well, Michael, I have an answer for you. Not soon enough. I am happy to announce that Retro Bassin actually has its first ever sponsor. It's not a big corporate sponsor. It is not a big lure company, but it's actually a clothing company started by my buddy Aaron right here in Dripping Springs, Texas. It's called Texas Provisions and they sell custom shirts, hats, and a whole bunch of good old stuff made right here in Texas. Check them out at txprovisions.com. That's txprovisions.com. And rest assured, we are rapidly working on a retro bass in line for Texas Provisions with both shirts and hats. Uh, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, check them out at txprovisions.com. All right, so the final question of the day is from Captain Jimbo Cunningham in Edgewater, Maryland. Jimbo asks, Retro, how does the Pissmaster Trophy Ceremony change with social distancing? Ooh, that, Jimbo, is one heck of a question. We will see what happens for the Pissmaster Classic when I'm back in Maryland next fall. Um, but I did call Uncle Randy, who is part of the uh, Tournament Rules Committee, and right now, he's actually categorizing coronavirus as fake news. So we'll see what happens. Um, but, oof, heck of a question. Okay, well, that was it, everybody. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. This has been uh, a, a crazy, crazy time for everybody. Um, <laughs> I wasn't kidding. I tell you what, um, nothing makes you long for simpler times than a uh, shutdown of basically the, the world as you know it. That being said, I don't think those little green fish care a whole lot about any coronavirus. And before too long, we get everything here settled at the compound. I'm gonna get back out there on the water this week. In the meantime, everybody, I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe, stay positive. Uh, if you have kiddos, enjoy this extra time with them. Uh, I know it's a challenge for sure. Make sure you got a few of these. I'll see y'all real soon. Subscribe, drop a comment below, and until next time, definitely fish it old school. Cheers. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses.